Just like in life, in trading, there are some once in a lifetime opportunities. They happen more than once in a lifetime, maybe even like once a month. Nonetheless, they're pretty rare. And we had one of those events just this past Friday, a really good trade. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, there is infinite opportunity in the market, but the only trades that really matter, right? The only huge outsized asymmetric returns that really, really matter are the ones that you can see, right? It's fun to look back and go like, oh yeah, we could have got in, you know, a thousand dollars here and turn that into a hundred thousand. But we actually had one of those trades this past Friday, a trade where you could have put in a thousand dollars, got out a hundred thousand dollars, right? A 10 thousand percent return is absolutely nuts i was in this trade right this is what i call a gamma trade i do gamma trades all the time now i didn't expect it to go to ten thousand percent i got out at around a thousand percent which is still a really good trade and then some of them i held a little bit longer than that but i'm going to break down all of the different components that you'll actually need to look at to even have a chance to get into one of these trades yourself for those of you who are new here my name is forrest i invest in stuff i'm a day trader as well i've made millions of dollars in the market over years at this point i've also lost tons of money ups and downs but at this point consistently profitable have a discord community right you can check us out at wap.com slash trade edge if you need a trading home we focus on teaching people how to trade right so it's not just a call out server where you can come in brain off if you're a person who wants to take trading seriously and actually learn and master this craft then we are the community for you if you're looking for the best discounts on a prop account check the links down below in the description of my video whether you're trying to get 20 accounts with apex trader funding at 90 percent off or 80 percent off whatever the sell is use my code it'll give you the best discount if you want to get an account at my funded futures one of my favorite firms out there i'm also their official youtuber go subscribe to their channel click the link down below uh, for a discount they actually have a june promo that's r they're running on expert accounts right now as well as Purdy Capital, have a permanent 50% off uh, link down below. And you can just use code FORCE50 with Purdy to get 50% off uh, whatever account you want to use there. Okay, enough of the promo. Let's break down. You're going to want to get out a pen and paper for this one, guys. This is going to be a pretty technical video. I actually took the time to make a bunch of slides for this one. But yeah, let's get into it. So if you're new to options, there's a few things to cover in this video. It's going to be pretty in-depth. I actually made up a whole slide deck for you guys, right? So we're going to talk about what an option contract is, binary option contract risk, right? So what is your upside potential as well as your downside risk? And then all the options Greeks, so delta, gamma, theta, as well as a gamma ramp, right? What's key to this trade, right? The reason that we get these 10,000% trades or even the 1,000% trades, right? These gamma trades, I have a lot of videos on gamma trades. It's one of the primary ways I make money is actually as a, as a gamma trader. You know, key to the strategy is only looking for a few of them a month. All right, we're going to get into some real strategy here. We're out, of the, we're out of the clickbait part of the video, guys. So please tune into this. What's key to these trades is there are not that many of them. So if you show up every day, if you're one of those person, people who is burning you know, money on options premiums every single day, uh, doing lottery trades, stay away from that. That is not what the strategy is, right? I have a personal expectation to only find a handful of these a month. And there's a few things. And that's really going to be the last thing that we talk about is what the actual TA or the, the setup is for this trade or why I was worth looking for on Friday and how I was able to be in this trade, right? This is a trade that we did call out in the discord. I was in it looking for it. I even talked about in the morning at like 9 45 AM, I actually mentioned that today or that Friday was going to be a, a perfect day for a gamma trade. All right. And we'll talk about all of that, but I want to give you guys the fundamentals first. Okay. So what is an option? Also want to mention, this isn't going to be a full options course. I just want to give you enough to understand this. So it'll be like a, I would say a 200 level kind of options breakdown here. But in any case, what is an option? An option is a contract that grants the owner of the contract the right to buy a certain number of shares at the contract specified price by a certain time. So all of the examples in this, uh, we're going to use a 40, 52, 45 call expiring on May 31st, which is the last Friday. As the example, you can get options on Apple, Nvidia, a bunch of different things. There are contracts that have a different number of shares, but normally when we're talking about options, we assume that one contract gives you the right to buy a hundred shares of the underlying. Okay. So if I was going to buy an Apple option, call option, it would give me the right to buy a hundred shares. If I bought a put, it would give me the right to sell a hundred shares at whatever the strike price is. Okay. That's what an option contract is. So for example, an SPX weekly, so that's SPXW 40, 52, 45 call option expiring on May 31st grants the owner to the right to buy 100 units of SPX at $5,000, 200 or $5,245 a unit by the 31st of May. 
Okay, now there's a footnote here. SPX is cash settled, so you can't actually buy 100 units of it. But that really isn't re relevant. Okay, the value of the contract is still based off of that fundamental concept of options. So imagine, and we can bring this over to Apple or something else. I'm just making these examples up live. It's not in the presentation. But imagine if you bought an Apple call, instead of actually getting the shares, you just got the value of the shares. Okay, that's cash settlement. So there's no actual shares being transferred. You're just doing a cash equivalent. That's what SPX is. Okay, it's just a cash settled instrument. All the options are cash settled. Settled. You don't actually get units of. It's just a footnote here. Doesn't matter for the mechanics of this. Okay, so let's look at some more concepts. If you sell a call option, right? Well, actually, this goes into the the binary options risk, right? So the next section is actually breaking down the binary option risk. Okay, so. If we sell a call, an SPX 5245 call expiring on May 31st, as an example, okay, right? The money that I make, if I sell this at 2 p.m., is the current value of the contract. So I have an example here. Let's actually go look at this call at 2 p.m. And this is a little utility that I made, right? The chart historic option prices. So at 2 p.m., which is 1400 We'll zoom really far in. I'm going to add a little overlay here. It's on my to-do list. Um, 34 cents, okay? So if I sold this at 2 p.m., right, I would have made, let's just call it 30 cents. I would make 30 cents times 100 is $30, okay? So I'm going to make $30 selling one of these at 2 p.m., okay? You basically take the premium, whatever it is, is 30 cents times 100, and that's how you get the money that you collect, okay? Make sense, guys? Okay, so I make my $30, and let's go back to the presentation. So my upside... That's the upside. The upside is the current value of the contract. Okay. It's limited to that value. I can't make more than what I sold it for. Okay. Now, if I sell a call, it's because I'm pretty confident the price of XPS isn't going to go above the strike price. Okay. Remember, I sold an SPX 5245 call. Let's go ahead and look at the chart. SPX at 2 p.m. Okay. At 1400 was, let's go to the five minute chart. Friday at 1400, we'll do a vertical line, was 52.15, right? I sold a 52.45 call. 52.45 is up here, okay? So the intersection of this vertical line and this second line, let's get rid of that. This is the option I sold, okay, at 2 p.m. The vertical line is the time, this is the price. I'm basically saying, hey, I want to sell this because I think whoever buys it, isn't. this isn't going to go in the money. We can see here that these did go in the money by quite a bit. Okay. If SPX does go above 52.45, the owner of the contract is going to come to me to deliver them 100 units of SPX at 52.45. But because SPX is cash settled, I would instead just deliver the cash value equivalent to, to the owner. This is bad for me, right? My downside is theoretically unlimited. And if we look at the graph, we can see here that as soon as these go in the money, the value of these went asymmetric, right? This closed at $42. So a contract that was 30 cents went up to $42 and you're probably you can now understand how you can, you know, not just 10 X, but hundred X your positions in this case, right? So 30 cents to, if, if you're bad at math, right? 30 cents times a thousand gives you $30, right? So once we crack $30, we were past the 10,000%, right? hundred X is 10,000%. And it actually did a little bit more than that. This thing went absolutely nuts. Probably one of the best returns, but I'm sure we've had, we've had, you know, bigger ROI on, on contracts and zeros before. It doesn't really matter. The point is that we can actually identify these, which we're going to get to next. So let's just pause there for a second and talk about everything that we did. If I sell a contract, 30 cents, and someone comes to me and they say, hey, I want to execute this, this call that you sold me. Now I have to actually go and buy sh shares of SPX, right? I have to buy 100 units of SPX. SPX, again, okay, if they come to me at... Let's say 3 p.m. Let's look at the price at, well, let's say once we go in the money. So if they come to me at 3.45 and the price is 52.54, I have to deliver them 100 units, right? Basically, I'm going to sell them 100 units at 52.45, but I have to buy them at 52.54. This is say 52.55. So I'm losing $10 on every unit of SPX, right? And they're making the inverse, okay? And the more that this goes, let's say that they execute it right up here at the top. I have to go buy 100 units at 5,280, and then I have to sell them to whoever owns the call at, at 5,245. 
So my losses are theoretically uncapped because this could theoretically just go into infinity. So if you ever sell calls, just realize that your, your losses, your downside is uncapped. Okay, if I buy a call, if I'm on the other side, I'm the person who bought it. The money I make is relative to how close to 50, 5245 F SPX gets and is also relative to the time available on the contract. Let's look at the contract chart again, as well as SPX on Friday, right? So my maximum downside is whatever I paid. So if I go and buy these for 30 cents, the most I can lose is the 30 cent premium, right? Which is $30 of, of real money. Multiply it by 100, right? The most I can lose is $30. The most I can gain is infinite, right? And the most I can gain is infinite. This chart could theoretically go on forever. It's not going to, but for all intents and purposes, in terms of risk, it is infinite, especially relative to your account size. That's the most important thing here, right? So infinite just has to mean it's high enough for your account to go to zero. Keep that in mind. And if you're trading a margin, it can, your account can actually go past zero, and then you'll owe your institution money. So keep that in mind. Let's look at the Greeks. So what are the different options, Greeks? This is where the mechanics come in, okay? So when you're trading options, these contracts, these 5245 call contracts are going to have a few Greeks associated with them, right? And those will tell you how the price will move as SPX moves. So delta is how much the premium will change for every $1 change in the price of the underlying. All right. So if we go and look at the chart again, and I said, hmm, I got these contracts for 30 cents. How much will they move in price if we go from 52.15 up to 52.16, right? Or 17 or 18 or 19 or 20, right? That's what delta is. Delta is going to tell you how much it'll move for every $1 move in the price, right? Gamma. Gamma is how much delta will increase for every $1 change in the underlying. In this case, for every dollar change in SPX, how much will delta change? I always call this in my videos, you think of speed and acceleration, right? So delta is how much the price will move. Gamma or acceleration is, is really the delta of delta, okay? But it, honestly, if you're not bad, if you can't think of delta or you're not familiar with math, just think of gamma as change of delta and delta is change of price, okay? So for every time a dollar changes, what will the, or every time SPX moves a dollar, what will the new delta be, right? How much will delta change by? Theta, whoops, we don't need that yet. Theta reduces the time value of a contract. The theta value is how much the contract premium will be reduced on a daily basis, assuming all else is equal. Remember guys, contracts give you the right to buy the underlying by given date. So if the underlying never gets to the strike, the contract needs to be worthless. And we can see that on the chart here, okay? So SPX was under 52.45 and these expired this day. So if these never, if the price never moved, these contracts would have remained worthless because we were they were pretty far away from their strike price of 52.45. Okay. So these would have expired worthless. And this is another key component of actually getting into these trades. I'll talk about that in a second. But you just need to know what theta is. You need to understand the theta value when you buy a contract. Make sure you're not buying contracts with too much theta left on them, right? You don't want them to, to decay too much once you get into the position. So let's look at an example. These are values that I just made up. These aren't real values. I just wanted to graph the relationship between these. So focus on the relationship of these, not the real values. I did not go through and, and graph the real values of these. There are tools that can do this. I just made these up to demonstrate the relationship, right? So let's assume the SPX is at 5,000. You get some contracts for a premium of 0 0.3, right? They have a delta of, or sorry, yep, yep. Premium of, of 30 cents and a delta of 30 cents. Okay, that's the 0 0.3. So when it moves to 5,001, the premium goes to 0 0.6. So they doubled. They doubled in value. They went from 30 cents to 60 cents. Why? Because they had a delta of 3. Now the question is, how much will delta change? Well, that's the gamma value. So we see that the new delta is 0.3 plus the gamma. Okay? And that continues on and on and on. As you can see here, the premium doubles, and then it goes up, right? And it keeps going up. And what you'll end up with is this exponential increase in premium as delta increases and gamma increases. Now, something not shown here is, well, I capped these off at one on purpose, is that once contracts go into the money, delta essentially becomes one. So you go from contracts that, to are, that are essentially worthless to them being one, and you're essentially buying the underlying shares for the exact difference between the strike price and however far in the money that they are, right? Basically, instead of buying a contract that gives you a discount on shares, you're just getting the shares at the, the difference between the fair market value and the strike price, right? And so every time the underlying goes up a dollar, the premium just goes up a dollar. 
that's why you end up with these charts that look like this because as soon as they go in the money these, this is just moving up dollar for dollar with the underlying at that point right so that's what that graph is so none of this matters without some ta so let's actually break down how we get into these trades and why this is these trades are so powerful so first and foremost on es and we really we really got to look at everything here i told you guys it's gonna be a long one so Oops, did not mean to move that line. So we have this previous POC that we cracked. This became resistance. Let's actually just go to the daily on ES here. There's a few few key levels here. Okay, let's turn on the visible range. Line profile, we already have that. So you can see that we bounced out of this node lower, close to my macro bear th flag thesis. We bounced out of this. On the daily, we were in a downtrend. You can see it a little bit better on the four hour here, right? Higher highs and higher lows. Downtrend. On ES, same on NQ. We'll go over to NQ. Downtrend. We bounced perfectly off of my macro pivot on NQ. I took a long here. In terms of futures, it was a disgusting day. I think I captured like 300 points total out of you know the hundreds of points that we are, that there were. We can see there's a 400 point range up and down. So I took a short. I took a, I took like four futures trades total for like 300 points. Great day. But we're talking about options. What's important here though is that all of these indices are tied together. So when we're looking at SPX, and we're thinking, what are the odds that after we hit this low that we reclaim the high? Well, something else you want to look at is the VIX. So the VIX had a pivot that it swept it to earlier in the day. We'll go to the five minute. And we can see here, this is that midday low that we saw on the other indices here. And it's the VIX high. VIX hits this pivot of its highs up here, right? Highs up here that it's testing. Highs in this area. And we can see that it likes to come off in this area. It was also the last day of the month. It was also a Friday. It was also, well, I already said last day of the month, but closing that monthly candle there. So there's a lot going on all in the same day with an elevated VIX. We can see that the VIX cracked up pretty high in the session, so which means we have increased volatility, increased probability of end of day wild outcomes. And that was kind of my thesis for an end of day sell off. You can see that we came right back to this pivot, this trend line that I have marked here. Funny enough, okay? So elevated VIX was important. A lot of data in, in the week. And I, I believe if we go to Forex Factory, there may have been data on Friday, May 31st. We can see that there was core, core PCE 8.30 a.m., right? So it was a day-to-day, -day, elevated VIX, Friday, end-of-month candle. All of that is important. Now, SPX itself, also important, we had a POC higher above us after hitting that low pivot. So we hit my macro pivot on NQ, okay? open up in Q here on the right. We hit this to the penny. And now I need to think about what's the last move of the day going to be. So at this point, and okay, we're looking at the chart and I'm thinking, hmm, well, we're probably going to come up from here. What are the odds that we get to this line? Well, not too crazy, right? A lot of skinny belly, skinny volume profile above. So I'm thinking this is a perfect setup for a gamma trade. This is essentially a return to a previous POC. We've got this POC above us, which is going to give us a little bit of a move. But then we have this previous day POC up here at 52.35 on the 15 minute, right? Very, very standard for the, the gamma trades that I take is, is looking for these macro HVNs. A point of control is literally just an HVN. It's just an HVN from the previous session, right? Now, I did not expect us to sweep this HVN, honestly. We can see that we came up, we flagged through the POC, got this little continuation pattern, and this continuation pattern was really the signal to hold here. So I fumbled holding mine until the end of the day. Uh, but I got a really, really, I got some really big trades. I had 52.45 calls, 52.35 calls, and 52.50 calls. All right. At three positions that I was in, all of those printed over a thousand percent. It was a disgusting day. But the actual setup here, there's a ton of confluence required for these trades is you need a reason for there to be an end of day strong move. Okay, and it can't just be you hoping for it. So we had a previous day POC above. We have continuation of the higher time frame trend, right? Higher highs and higher lows. So we put in a low. It's within reason for us to, to come back here and do a liquidity sweep. We had data in the morning. Data days have an expanded trading range as well as just expanded movements in the session. Elevated VIX, Friday, end of the month. Okay, all of those were key to actually identifying the setup. And that's how you get these trades that give you these disgusting returns. If we look at the 5235s really quickly, we can see that these also went absolutely nuts. And we can look at the 52, ooh, excuse me, we can look at the 5250s 
and we can see that those all went absolutely nuts. So every single position that I was in, I wasn't in at the lows. Uh, some of these I was in at a dollar. The best position I was in at 20 cents. Uh, so I did have a range of returns there that were all, all made for a very, very nice week of trading options overall. I don't want this video to be too much longer. We're already hitting a 30 minute mark total, but that is the key to identifying these trades. I call these trades out and I break these down live in the discord. If you want more, you know, if you want to ask more questions, that's what the, the discord is for. There's a seven day free trial. Okay. The discord is not free. Someone recently came on and was like, you said it was free. And I was like, I've literally never said that, you know, and he doubled down on it, but uh, I knew that wasn't the case, but just saying it here again. Okay. There's a seven day free trial. These trades like this can be life changing, right? Most of the money that I make is in these big trades, even though I trade futures every day, I trade the prop firms. I did like 50K net on options last week, okay? Which is completely different than, you know, the returns you get from prop firms and stuff, you know, playing all the mini games, which is fine. Well, we do that. Prop firms are great. But yeah, I spent some time to break this down because people are asking more, about, more and more about some of these gamma trades that I take. And these are core to really my, my, uh, my trading regimen, I would say, and the, the types of trades that I take. Again, to wrap here, I want you guys to really take this point in. There needs to be a setup, okay? You will waste hundreds, if not thousands of dollars throwing money into the wind, trying to catch these crazy gamma trades when there aren't there, okay? Do not play the market like a casino. If you play the market like a casino, you'll get casino outcomes where you just lose uh, mostly. And then you, every once in a while, you'll have a big win, but it's going to be you know, outweighed by, you know, your string of small losses or even big losses. Okay. So do not do that guys. I hope you appreciate this video. We did crack the $10,000 mark. I'm going to do a little giveaway for that. Think about that later. Got more stuff to film today, but yeah, catch you in the next video. Peace.